What's going on guys? My name is Corey Vanderplu at Corey Photo on Twitter and Instagram. Today I'm going to be critiquing some of my subscribers' photos. If you're wondering who am I to be critiquing photos, let me just give you a quick rundown. I've been a photographer for 15 years. I worked as an editor for 10 years. I've assisted world-renowned photographers in the Canada and in the US. I was a commercial retoucher in New York City. I've also assisted world-renowned retouchers. I worked in a print shop for two years. I worked on multiple books for Tashin, The Met, other photographers. My eyes have been training for about 20 years. Uh, it's all I do. It's my life. I live and breathe this stuff. And I think everyone can put their style on it, say why an image can be better. And that's the point of this, to, to learn, to grow. I'm going to be learning things too through this. So let's just jump right into it. So Milo says, I'm from Mexico. I did not know which photograph to send. I love your work and your videos. I learned a lot from them. Thank you so much, Emilio, for, for watching. Let's just jump right into this. So this is great. Again, cropping. I'm always going to talk about cropping. This would sit much better. If it had the same headroom on the other side, you know, I mean, this is, I do not condone what I'm about to do, but this is just so you can get the gist of, of what it would look like. And you can see that this kind of extra space on the side, is, it would be extremely helpful. Um, the, I'm not, not so happy with the composition here, uh, especially when I break it up into grids like this. It's broken up into three distinct segments. I mean, mathematically, it's better. It just sits a lot, a lot nicer. Um, but it is a, a fantastic image. It's beautiful. I, I also think the inconsistencies in the background are a bit of a distraction. Um, I like when you're doing very stripped, very raw things. Um, you, you have the, you can see that it's a seamless. But I don't think that helps in your case. I think maybe this is fine, but otherwise I think you could make the background, you know, a lot cleaner. I mean, you're doing something that's very conceptual and very posed and dancing is very fluid and not, you know, this uh, simple thing that can just be put onto a backdrop. I think that the background should, you know, reflect Oops. How clean the, and everything this should be. Man, that didn't sound good. I think the background should just be cleaner and simpler. I mean, you can see that I'm doing a rough sketch here. And you can see that it's already making it a lot simpler. And s simplicity is really all that's going to elevate your photo. So now if I was to go back on this, I mean, you can see how this is already simplifying. And if you were to just take the time and simplify this, um, you'll see that it would make it a much stronger image. And that's really all you're trying to do is how can I make it stronger? How can my work elevate above everyone else's? So this is just a nice quick example. So then what would you, do, you would do is you'd go back in using your mask and you would paint it all back. But again, that's just my opinion. I just think it would be much cleaner if you had a nice simpler background, maybe even no, that's it. The background nice and simple. Otherwise, you could take it even a step further and make this look a lot more, you know, exaggerated, which is also really cool. And really throw in a dent to really, you know, up the stylization. Because that made a huge difference. And it's really cool. And no one would ever know. And that's what it's all about. No one ever knowing. But I think it's a great concept. I just think you can take those steps to elevate it up a little bit better. And then this one, this one could be improved by looking right down the camera. I love that it's um, has a bit of symmetry to it. But again, so if we go right down the center, she's very centered. But I feel like there's too much space on this side. So ideally, I would want it to be somewhere around here. Like this is just what my the old composition gut says is that that sits nicer even though it's not centered. I just think that would sit a little better. Now imagine if she was just looking dead down the lens, making that contact with camera. 
I feel like if you don't have the contact with the camera, then you're missing the connection. If you're missing the connection, then something else is important. I mean, her hair looks great, the tights are cool, but what are you selling here? Is it the shape? Why can't she just be looking at the camera? Something that uh, photo editors always tell me, and you hear from a ton of photo editors, is I need eye contact. Photo editors love eye contact. They'll always choose a photo with eye contact over a photo with not looking. Well, other, other than that, I think you could, you already started to work the vignette, so I think you could come in here, lower it just a little. Again, I'm working on a JPEG. I hope you're working on an 8-bit image or higher. And just simplify it even more. Just shape her even more, which is really nice. Um, other than that, I think this little lace is a distraction. It would be cool if you could make a new layer and draw the hair over it. Um, this way it's just, it's another layer that you don't need. Um, at least this way, it just, again, simplifies the image. You're going to hear that a lot from me. Simplifying the image. So then I would just take the hair and then the hair paints right over like that. Mm -mm 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 -mm. And then you just go like this. Maybe use a bigger brush, softer brush, and get rid of that. I mean, that just simplifies it. You, you don't really need that thing. I just, the hair, the tights, and the skin is really all you need, nice and simple. Another thing I would do is a little bit, just a little bit more of this leg room or, or, or bottom half of this, just in case it's going to print or it's being uploaded somewhere, and for some reason they just chopped the tiniest little bit off. I just think that is a lot more helpful. And then my last one would be, you know, work on your crops. Make sure you have consistency in your crops. Otherwise, the lighting's nice, your model's nice, you're obviously a skilled photographer. I just think those two things can, can help you elevate your game and elevate those images. So David Kindy. I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take this photo. I'm gonna take this photo all right just shot from my gut here one thing I do notice and was a critique previously is that the you, you got to find consistency with your images the, these first two and maybe even this one but mostly these first two you can tell they're shot from the same photographer as we go down this still has a similar vibe but then I'm starting to lose it here this is completely different uh, you can it's okay to mess with motion blur but if you look at my work as I um, as I mess more and more with uh, motion blur, you can still tell that it's one of my images. You know, you can still tell that it has that visual signature. As I'm coming back here, um, I'm just losing it a bit. It just, it looks like you're just messing around with some funky camera effects. I want you to really just shoot more find your language, find your, your voice. This is cool. If there's somehow you could mix in similar lighting as here, it'd be cool. And then look at our old friend. But again, we're trying to find consistency. You want to have consistency. So let's start with these two. Now, this is a really cool image. Again, I started, started talking about banding. You never want banding. It looks like there's no detail in here either. Um, one thing you want is you always want detail. Something that's blown out and has no detail won't let you get jobs. It just doesn't have that high level factor. Obviously there are rules to that, but uh, there are ways to blow out completely and still uh, be at that high level. But this just shows uh, poor execution. And I, I do not mean to offend David, but uh, you, you just gotta have detail uh, unless it's, for that super artistic. It also looks like you're messing around with natural light. It's really hard to do something like this and then 
let's say someone hired you right now. Let's say I'm hiring you. I have $10,000 for a job. I would like you to recreate a bunch of kids portraits the exact same way with like this. Could you go into a studio and could you do that? Could you replicate this kind of lighting? It looks like this was kind of a finite thing. So unless you can figure out how to consistently hit this and be consistent, that's what's going to make you a great photographer. That's what's going to elevate you to the next level. Other than that, I think you can uh, you can probably crop in a bit. You could uh, make it a little bit more simple like this, get the composition a little better. And I think that would look a little nicer. You might be able to even get rid of this, uh, you know, distracting stuff in the back very simply um, by doing something like this. I don't think you have anything gained from the, uh, the mammals in the back. The lighting on his face is great. It's just, it's a little sloppy in here. So watch out for that. This one's great. Look how sharp that little kitty is. He looks amazing. This again might be a little bit distracting uh, up against his fur. So just get rid of this. I like that he's in his own, his own world. This has really nice composition too. Um, this would probably be a little better here like that. You can see we get the nice in the middle. It's broken up really nicely. Even his eye line right there is nicely. So there's a big difference there. Um, but again, it looks like you're, you're in the moment chasing light. As long as you can be consistent, I think that's really what's going to elevate you. Um, work on your composition. It looks like you need to shoot a little bit more, get that execution down. Um, but I think you're on your way. Um, the light on his face here is beautiful. So just practice more and get that going. Thank you so much for sending these in, David. I really appreciate you watching my videos and learning. If you have any questions, David, feel free to shoot me the same email or leave any questions in the comments. I mean, my goal here is to help you. So leave me a comment and I'll help you the best I can. Thanks for sending in photos. Last but not least, we have Ildi. Ildi sending in a bunch of images. Saw your message on YouTube, might be sending you my pictures, but here they are. I used some of your techniques to edit my portraits. Fantastic, really cool. So we gotta work on our crops. I see this one's cropped, but this one isn't. I think this one is four by five, it looks it. So let's see if I go four by five ratio. It is a four by five, great. So let's get this one on a four by five too. Um, I'll do it in a different way. So I like, I do even like this as a tighter crop. Correct me if I'm wrong, but it's much nicer. I don't think you need any of these extra tiles, any of this extra skin. Um, I think this is the, the crop here. One thing I would fix um, immediately is the hair on the back. Um, there'd be a cleaner way for you to do this, but I think um, adjusting the head to even be something like that. It's much nicer. Um, you, again, you always want to watch your silhouette, watch the lines, make sure it's nice and clear. Um, one thing you get rid of, I love these swooping ones. I don't think the strand is helping you. I like the clean skin a lot more. I mean, again, I'm just doing this rough. You can see it's a lot nicer. I think that helps a lot. Other than that, I think it's great. The colors are really nice. I like that you have this kind of light coming in here, but I think it's a nicer subtlety if you come in close. I think you can do a little bit of lifting um, along the chin and along the face uh, just to give it a little bit of a glow, drop the opacity down a little bit um, and bump it up that just a little bit down here. Um, I see a little bit of blotchiness it looks like something was either too much uh, retouching went on here or the line was fine, but you got to watch that the skin texture has gone a little um, funky here, a little bit too smooth. So I'd go back and try to uh, copy that over. A good way to do it, um, if, if you couldn't go back to the raw image, oops, sorry, is to take your clone tool and bring it right down on a new layer and just powder puff in 
powder puff in where that the almost too clean skin was and then just erase and you can see it was a quick job but it still made a big difference in the in the cleanliness of it and then you can even take an opacity layer and drop it right down but I think your move is to go back into the original file and see where you went wrong other than that, it's a nice photo. I think cropping in and making it a little bit more intimate, especially in such an intimate moment that would really elevate the photo. You can see a lot of stuff happened here. A lot of simple fixes too. Um, next image is really cool. I love how um, stylized this is. I would love if it wasn't so dark up here to be lifted so it was a lot more even. So just take a little curves layer. Uh, I know in the raw file, Ildi, that you'll be able to come right back up here and really brighten that up. The thing you want in an image is balance. One of my favorite things to say in any meeting is it's all about balance. I also noticed that must have done some liquefying in here. We lost a, uh, a little bit of the edge. So we'll have to go in here, take a little bit of our liquefy tool and just squeeze that out. See a big difference there on the edge. And then again, about the beauty remark, let me go back to an old friend here, Wade Hudson Beauty. You can see the, uh, the high, high level of skin retouching and how you have to be at that high level. And when you're doing a beauty shoot like this, I mean, it, there just can't be any mistakes. You can see that there's a lot of white marks the white marks are really your worst friend. You don't need any of this shine in here. Um, you don't need any of this white stuff. You don't need this one single flyaway. The thing about beauty retouching is once you think you're done, go to sleep, wake up the next day, and hit it for another round. And there is a really fine balance between what is too much and what isn't. You can see this is just perfection, great skin, um, no distractions, your eyes stick here, but when I come here, I'm distracted by this highlight on the nose. I'm distracted by a couple of the blotchy spots up in here. I'm distracted by here. If you're going to take the beauty realm, you got to really step up your game. I love the concept and, and everything. I th still think this should probably be, like, I feel like that would do, would, f would feel better. Again, I don't want to mess up with your your crops or anything, but this just sits better in the frame. Um, other than that, just work on that beauty retouching. Maybe get rid of some of these uh, uh, extra eye highlights. I think that one is great. You just really need the one. Simplify, simplify, simplify. Get rid of the white in here. And just work on your, beauty, uh, your skin retouching. Um, I just don't think there should be any distractions. And that's the hardest thing about beauty retouching and, and beauty photography is the high, high level of simplicity. And I don't think you need any of this stuff either. This is just simplifying. So go in, take out your fine tooth comb and give it a whirl. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I'm done with my photo critiques for now. Our next critique is on September 11th. And we have Alonzo Diaz, Chi Sim and Russ Hain photography. If you want to have your work reviewed, email contact at coreyvanderplug.com. Um, really enjoyed looking at your photos, and thank you so much for the trust to uh, let me critique your photos. I hope you learned something. I hope you learned that photography is constantly growing and learning something new, and that you can critique any photo, and that's the point. You can take any one of my crit photos and critique. I mean, it can never end. No image is perfect as long as you're learning something new and uh, you're willing to, to have constructive criticism. That's the most important. All right. Uh, hit like, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and happy shooting. Cheers, guys.